Hello and welcome to my next tutorial about Prepomex. In this tutorial I will show you how to perform a two-dimensional analysis of heat transfer in a double pane window. Such example is a good illustration of the composite wall heat transfer problem. Let's create a new model first. Uh, since I've mentioned that this was two-dimensional analysis, I have to select either plane stress or plane strain. Uh, it actually doesn't matter here because the analysis is not mechanical, so uh, we can choose either plane stress and or plane strain. The results will be the same. Uh, this only matters in, in terms of mechanical analysis. Uh, I will choose just uh, I will ju choose the, the plane strain option, uh, and now I have to import the geometry. And uh, this is the the file here. And the geometry is really simple. Uh, in this case, you can see that this is just uh, mm, the, the simple representation of, of uh, uh, two layered window. This is a layer of g glass, uh, another layer of glass and uh, and the air between uh, these two layers. Uh, so this is the mm, the geometry that you are going to analyze in this case. Uh, I prepare the geometry as always in uh, FreeCAD. Uh, you can see that there are three faces touching each other. I just prepare the sketches and uh, then use the uh, make face from wires tool to uh, create these faces and uh, export them to uh, prepomex we can also ensure the uh, the norm that the make sure that the normal direction is is correctly defined in this case uh, the front face is, is facing our direction so uh, you don't have to worry about this and now I will mesh the geometry. I can select all the uh, parts and set meshing parameters. Uh, this will be uh, one millimeter uh, for uh, all these uh, layers. And now I can select them again and create a mesh uh, for all these uh, layers. All right, the mesh is now created and now I have to define materials, uh, sections uh, and uh, a few more uh, things. Let's define materials first. Uh, I will uh, define glass and I have to specify thermal conductivity. Uh, specific heat and density are not needed because the analysis will be steady state, so we just need the thermal conductivity. And the value uh, is given in this uh, sheet. You can see the values for each layer, uh, starting from, from the first layer, then in the air, and, and again in the glass layer. Uh, so this is the uh, value that I will uh, specify uh, here. And I will create, uh, create another material, this will be air. And again, I'll have to specify thermal conductivity and you can see uh, the value that we want to uh, define for the thermal uh, conductivity. And this is the, uh, the right uh, value. Okay, now let's confirm this. And I, I have to create two sections. Uh, the first section will be uh, for glass. I can name this glass and I have to specify the thickness. And actually it, it doesn't really matter here because you can see uh, that when I change the, th this is the, the thickness, you can see that when I change the uh, thickness, uh, only uh, this value changes and the actual results that we are interested in, the temperatures uh, don't really change, so uh, it doesn't uh, matter. Uh, but we could uh, use this for the visualization. We could uh, make the visualization in 3D in the analysis, so uh, then the, the thickness will be uh, imported. Uh, all right, so this is the glass layer and I will uh, apply this to this and this uh, layer uh, because the air is in between. Uh, now another layer for the air, uh, so uh, the same uh, thickness and I have to assign this to this region. Now I can hide the mesh and I can use the uh, color annotations to uh, display mm, assignments of material and section. You can see that there are proper, uh, properly assigned materials. These are uh, layers of glass and uh, air between them. I can hide this. All right. And now I have to define tie constraints because uh, the three layers are not connected and uh, the heat transfer won't uh, be able to occur between them. Uh, I have to uh, either mm, I either define contact between these layers uh, with uh, gap conductivity uh, or a tie constraint which will allow for uh, heat transfer. In this case I'll use tie constraint, this is easier. I could also merge the, the parts but uh, in this case mm, let's use a tie constraint. Uh, and uh, I will use the search contact pairs tool uh, to automatically define the, the pairs. Uh, the first two pairs are um, pairs of uh, consisting of surfaces, uh, so this is something that we don't need. And the two uh, pairs here are the actual uh, pairs that we want to um, define between edges. Uh, so let's confirm this and now we have tie constraints defined. Uh, and now I just have to define the step. Uh, this will be a heat transfer step with steady state uh, on. Uh, and I just have to define loads now. Uh, I will define two, uh, uh, two convective film uh, loads. Uh, the first one will be applied to the, this, uh, mm, this edge. Uh, this will represent the conditions outside. 
so this will be the temperature of minus 10 degrees uh, this is the uh, value defined also here and uh, the value for uh, heat transfer uh, coefficient or f also called known as uh, film coefficient uh, this is the, mm, the value that we want to define here with, with these units uh, and another convective film this will be applied to this edge and it will represent the uh, conditions inside uh, so this is 20 uh, degrees and uh, the same uh, heat transfer coefficient uh, so I will specify 20 degrees here and uh, the same value for the heat transfer uh, coefficient I can confirm this uh, and the analysis is uh, already defined uh, I can submit it and wait for the results as you can see, the results are already available. Uh, it didn't take long because the, the model is two-dimensional, it's really simple. Uh, so uh, we already have the results and now we can check them. Uh, let's use the uh, query tool and I will show you the analytical results uh, that I obtained in this sheet. Mm, here you can see the temperatures. They're mm, assigned to layers. This is the uh, first edge uh, outside, uh, on connecting the, the, out, uh, the outside environment and, and the glass. First layer of glass, then uh, this, uh, this edge is between glass and air. Uh, this uh, edge is between air and glass. And finally, this uh, is uh, the, the last, the second outer edge um, on the interior, uh, on the interior side. Uh, so those are the uh, subscripts that, that I used um, for these uh, results. Uh, and now let's look for these values in uh, in the uh, per simulation. Let's use the point node query tool, mm, and I will uh, select uh, various nodes uh, here. Mm, actually, I can also uh, again hide the uh, hide the mesh because now I will clearly really see the layers um, layers between layer boundaries actually, uh, and I can uh, query the and the values here and look for uh, for the temperatures uh, in, in this location you can see that they slightly change uh, along the uh, length of the uh, of the edge uh, but we are pretty close to uh, the value that we're expecting to see uh, this is for the uh, for the first edge and now uh, i could also uh, i can also check the the other edges and now I'm looking for the values uh, here mm, for the uh, under edge. Uh, again, we are pretty close to the analytical solution, uh, depending on where we move. Uh, there are some variations along the line, but uh, you can see that uh, we are pretty uh, close to what we are expecting to see. Mm, and now let's check uh, another edge. This is the, the one here. Uh, let's uh, query the, the value mm, that we're this is again uh, pretty close to what we're expecting uh, and uh, now mm, let's uh, check the uh, last edge and this is the, the one here uh, this is the outer edge on the right side and uh, let's uh, find uh, the, the values on this edge again it's, it's really close to, uh, to the analytical uh, solution with some uh, with some discrepancy of course uh, but uh, we can also check one more thing uh, because uh, I also calculated the uh, heat flux here uh, so let's check the heat flux uh, I will switch to uh, heat flux uh, in proper direction and now I can measure the, the values uh, again uh, you can compare this with, with the analytical solution uh, using proper units and you can see that uh, once again we are pretty close to uh, what we're expecting uh, to the analytical solution that uh, that we obtained in this uh, this sheet all right uh, that's it for this Prepamax tutorial uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention as always feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments have a nice day and see you in the next video